last uh, 15 minutes or here or, or so here yeah. i mentioned at the at the top matt bellany from puck news he wrote about aew now matt bellany i've actually traded emails with him before around the time of you know the saudi arabia buying wwe rumors and he was like yeah that's bullshit um yeah and so, you know, I, not that I have a relationship or a friendship with him. I'm just a, a subscriber. And so I, I really like his work. He's also had Nick Khan on his podcast a bunch of times. And so when I saw in his newsletter, uh, the newsletter is called uh, What I'm Hearing. So Matt Bellany used to be a reporter, or I'm sorry, an editor for The Hollywood Reporter. And so, you know, he's got sources, he knows everybody in, in Hollywood. And so he, t he did a mailbag issue uh, last night. And so the first question in the mailbag that he answered said, everyone's talking about David Zaslav and Warner Brothers Discovery probably losing the NBA, but nobody's talking about the other rights deal he's about to bungle all elite wrestling. Why? Interesting. So then Matt wrote, because WBD's Turner Sports is still in exclusive negotiating window with AEW, meaning that's why we haven't been talking about it because they're still in this exclusive period. But then he wrote, the upstart WWE competitor signed a multi-year deal with Turner in 2020 with an option that Turner exercised, which is why we thought the deal was going to expire last year. They exercised the option, so now the deal expires this year. And now Zaslov and TNT sports head Lewis Silberwasser would like to keep the five hours of AEW programming per week on TNT and TBS. But the clock is ticking. I'm told the exclusive window closes in July and AEW leader Tony Khan is said to be disappointed with the offer currently on the table. Now, there's a there's a bit of a definition of what that means depending on yeah. what side you're on you know with, with with what you believe he's saying tony khan is said to be disappointed i know there's a, a, a dave said last night on wrestling Observer radio that uh that i could you know there's um i think there's a story on on the website right now i don't want to i don't want to misquote dave of all people me misquoting dave would, would not be I know. great right? travesty <laughs> so um in, in a story that's just on on the front page right now of this website it says according to dave Meltzer, aew sources have told him that the first offer was not disappointing to tony khan but the two sides have yet to reach any deal okay so you could take it that way or okay. you could take it as if he's not disappointed in the deal he would have already signed it so you could take it both ways i think so then he goes to write Khan also surely knows that Zaz losing the NBA would give AEW more leverage, even though the money to re-up AEW is a mere drop in the NBA bucket. Like we're talking just complete opposite, you know, deals money-wise. You know, one is for, you know, they're haggling 2.3 billion and 2.1 billion. And now we're talking about AEW, you know, a hundred million. Like just the the amounts are are so vastly different. Okay. Yeah. So then he wrote. If the window closes without a deal, others could swoop in for those rights, as Comcast has done with the NBA. Extra awkward because WBD is said to own a stake in the league. So he's saying right here that it would be awkward if someone else swooped in to get the AEW rights because WBD is said to own a stake in AEW. What did you think about that line? Um. Okay. Can I can I backtrack to the whole thing, or you want me to hit yeah, a piece yeah. by oh, piece? No, go you, whatever oh, you want. So, and, and then remind me if I forgot anything. Okay. I would say reading that story, like I agree with you a hundred percent. Depending on what side of the fence you stand on, it's going to be either better or worse. One side is, yeah, he's not getting what he wants, and that means he's not going to get over a hundred million dollars. Um, I. I don't think it's as bad as what the internet is putting out there. And you also don't know what kind of tone he's speaking in mm -hmm. when he says disappointed. Okay, you know what? I could be disappointed in a lot of things, but it's still a great offer. Mm -hmm. Or I could be disappointed that we're not where we are, where we should be. You you could you could be uh, you you could want double what you're what you're getting 
or or double what they're offering, but their offer may still yeah. be really beneficial to you. So that that could be a disappointment in that aspect too. Yeah, I I the, I will tell you that there was an offer that was given to Tony. It was not a full offer. It was just for streaming. Or or mm-hmm. I, I gotta I gotta look at I gotta look at my my messages. I I'm not. It was for it was for definitely for streaming. It's for like the digital side of things. I don't mm-hmm. know if that included be, uh, being off of whatever service and going to another one that was archives. But Tony opted to bundle everything together. He didn't want to do a partial deal at the time just for streaming. And you know what? They 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 can't get a TV deal, and now he needs to figure out what the hell I'm doing right. and split the networks. You know whatever he's going to do. Sure. I I don't know if. If that's the disappointment or it's a financial thing, but I could tell you, I mean, they're going to, I, I would be shocked, shocked. My, my, my thing is breaking. I'm sorry. I would be shocked if they leave WBD. Mm -hmm. I never knew. I never heard a number. Nobody has once said a number to me. Uh, I, I, I will most likely say that if people are putting out a number, it's bullshit because NDAs are most likely signed. Non-disclosures are signed. Uh, you know, once you sign an NDA, uh, you really don't want to talk to anybody. And there's only a couple people in those meetings. You're not going to... Same thing with WWE. You know, when everybody was like, how come nobody knew that this deal with Netflix was happening? It's because the second you start having serious conversations, you sign papers and everybody stops talking. And you're not going to yeah. jeopardize losing money or risking the deal by talking. I think... Uh, you know, there's tremendous truth to that article. Uh, whether or not it's in, you know, the context is is coming forward or he's holding back on some stuff that he knows because I'm sure he doesn't want to put out everything that he's heard. I, I don't... I, listen, I, I'm taking it as these negotiations, things happen. Sometimes you're you're in a very positive upward and then there's a little monkey wrench that gets thrown at you and now you got to wait and you got to renegotiate and you got to pivot a little bit. That's just how these things are. I would be shocked if they don't sign in the summer. This was supposed to be a second quarter thing. This was supposed okay, to be so done by now. <clears throat> Bellany says he believes it expires in July. I, 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 I believe was, he's I, 100% correct. I was kind of putting the tea leaves together like i was trying to get some information out of dave on uh sunday night like he wouldn't budge i was thinking like you know late late june early july but like sooner than we realize that that's kind of the gauge that i had okay but then what about the piece of uh it would uh, extra awkward because WBD is said to own a stake in the league, which he's calling yeah. AEW the league. Yeah. That's what many people have heard, mm-hmm. including myself. And I've alluded to that many times. I, and I, Tony was asked about this. Yeah. And Tony's response was not a absolutely not. That's ridiculous. I own 100%. He said he controls it. He's, he's in charge. Controls the stock. You yeah. Know? He controls, he, yeah, so he he controls the stock, which is, yeah, I'm sure. But uh, I I was told that very early on. Uh, I mean, you and I have spoken about this. I mean, I don't want yeah. I don't want to give away we, a lot we, of the conversation, we've, but we've talked we've talked about it someone on this show as well. I, I've spoken off the air with you tons, too, about this. Um, I had a very interesting conversation with somebody that is, uh, I guess, a. a a detractor of AEWs? Really? There's not. Okay. You and... talked to Jim Cornette. Come on. You can give it. <laughs> You're really close. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to say who it is, but, I, you know, they're vocal. They're not. They're vocal about things. Yeah. Um, I thought it was very odd that this person had heard exactly what I had heard with the mm-hmm. same names being associated. Okay. Still and connected. We, do not run in, we do not run in the same circle. It, listen, it very easily could be. Just one guy that's high up there that said it, and then everybody else took it and ran with it. Very possible. I'm not there day to day, and I don't talk to these people day to day. But I, yeah. I do think that you know that is something that a lot of people have heard. I don't know the the depth of it, but I've I've always said I've never seen, and I work with 
if you know my day job, you know what I do. And I work with many mm -hmm. different brands and many different companies and different mm -hmm. types of businesses, uh, individuals. I've never seen synergy between a television product and the network this close where, you know, they, they very much are proud of having that product on their TV show. They love it. Uh, they're, I've, I, listen, I talk to people in sales. I talk to people in marketing. I talk to people on the executive level. Never, I've never been once set, told anything negative about AEW. Never. But you know what, what I have heard? People from USA trashing WWE. People from Fox trashing WWE. Uh, other content partners that, are, that I know. Uh, just very openly speak about things that they don't like about what they do. I've never had that once happen with WBD. So either it's a very kumbaya relationship, or maybe there is a little smoke to that fire. All right. I so think that's a positive if WBD is involved. I think that's great. Let me finish the email, and then we can wrap up here. We've okay. got a few minutes left. So then he wrote, I'm not sure how alluring AEW would be to another platform, which is where I think people get a little bit frustrated with as well especially since only non-WWE partners could bid. Who are those non-WWE partners? Well, you're talking about Fox, and I don't think it would be for Big Fox. I think Brandon Thurston had a note that said, you know, he could see something like FS1. There's also Amazon out there. The one that I think is like, this would be the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow, would be ESPN. And now people would say, well, why would you go on ESPN? They run so many sports, they'd get preempted. Yeah. ESPN has this little product coming out, which is completely over the top. It is not there. You know, they're, they're basically putting all of their content that they show on their linear channels in, in an app that you could just subscribe to so that you don't have to have cable. Now, what if ESPN decided to make AEW streaming only? on their app now immediately aew would have less of an audience but if you sort of believe in the idea of espn and disney understanding how to grow a subscriber network maybe espn could actually make aew even more popular that is my sort of pie in the sky i know there were there are some people who would think that you know oh, streaming only would be terrible for them but i think if we saw what they've done with the UFC, and I'm not comparing the two sports because UFC is a giant brand by comparison, there's something that you could do there with uh, with AEW and ESPN over the top. But they'd have they'd have to be interested, obviously. Okay, yeah. so so he then he wrote, but the wrestling shows still do okay on the Turner Networks. It's reliable programming, and a rival suitor could further push Zaslov into hot water in his cable carriage deals now this goes back to the idea that zaslov allowed the nba to escape during their exclusive negotiating window and once he let them escape comcast came in with a deal and so did amazon by the way but comcast came in with a deal that trumped what wbd could do for them because they have an actual broadcast network channel that WB doesn't. So WBD wants to come and match this deal. And the, the NBA is like, you can't match it. Like you don't have a broadcast network to put our games on, on Sunday night. Like, you know, the uh, NBC's uh, Sunday night uh, NFL programming they're, they're I think the idea is just to replace that with NBA when the football season is over. Now it won't do the same crazy ratings that the NFL does, but I think that's the idea. There's no way that Warner brothers could actually duplicate that effort so this is him saying is zaslov gonna let this other group escape the exclusive negotiation window without a deal knowing that there could be another company that blows his offer out of the water and tony khan's like sorry guys see you later yeah i i would say um I, listen a two and a half billion dollars a year is a is a huge amount of money to pay for the NBA. I mean, that's a lot of money. And I think they're, they're looking at it as they're, they're in a cost cutting mood, uh, mode other than the playoffs, you know, can they just have, can they bring in something else that'll maybe stop some of the, the hemorrhage in the viewership from leaving the station because Jesus, I can't hold anything today. Uh, <laughs> I, I, 
I don't think Zaslav is a fan of wrestling. I don't think he gives a crap about wrestling. I think at the end of the day, he's looking at the PNLs and he's looking at how much advertising revenue can we generate for the uh, for AEW or or US uh, USA. I, my brain again. I don't know what's happened here. My brain just stopped. <laughs> uh, I I would say that for 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 AEW, uh, this is a positive because money's open, but. Mm -hmm. You know, they're they're number three in all of cable most nights. That's not that's really hard to do. Yeah. Really hard. Uh if you're not the NBA, you're not the NHL, you're not basketball, whatever, whatever event is happening. If you're not live sports, that's really hard to do. But where else are they gonna go? Yeah. You really don't have an option. I mean, Paramount, uh Param what's the option with Paramount? You're gonna be on uh, you're not going on CBS proper. So that's out the window. I don't think it's going to be Disney getting involved. I don't, I don't see ESPN grabbing them. So you go streaming and you're dead in the water. You don't have the, the, the relationship with your audience that's built over the last, you know, 40 years or so that Vince did, you know, Vince leaving linear now or WWE leaving linear, um, you know, it, it's, it's a risky move, but you have the money that's going to justify you doing it. Because they're, they're, they're throwing everything at you. You are the flagship for professional wrestling, regardless if you're the best product or not. And you also have brand recognition that, that extends decades. AEW only has five years. And they're in a building phase. When you go behind streaming or you go behind a paywall, you're alienating a lot of that viewership. The mm -hmm. ease of discoverability. That's, I've, I've, being in tech, for all the years that I was in tech, I always said discoverability is the key to success. That's why every one of these podcasters got successful. It wasn't because their shows were great in 2012, 13, whatever it was. It was because they were doing consistent material and you had the ability to be found. You were on a database that was used by hundreds of millions of people every day. You know, being on cable helps. Being on Max helps. But if you remove those two, and you just go digital, what happens then? But here's a counter to that point. And I, I'm in agreement with you, by the way. Yeah. But if you sign up where your programming is only on cable and there is no streaming um, setup, you're basically signing up to lose audience immediately, right? Because the cable's just yeah. going to keep going down. Uh, well, well, no, what is it, it needs gonna... to be a two part solution. It needs to be right. two part. There it needs, needs to be, to be exactly a... what. And I put that tweet out months yeah. ago. This yep. is what I was told from day one. This is something that Tony very much wanted because he, he has that foresight. He wants a hybrid simulcast of sorts for that company. And I think even, that's a benefit. Even the, next, even the next day would be fine. But a simulcast would be interesting. I don't know if uh, the cable <laughs> distributors would be so happy about that. But no, but they do you know, it with there, the NBA. They they did it with the NBA, but there was not it was not in the deal. It was WBD yeah. basically going, "We're going to do this," and sorry, we're going to deal with <laughs> it. Yeah. They yeah. found a so, loophole. Um, yeah. So all right, let me read the last piece of this, and we'll get out of here. I know we're going to be running a couple minutes late, but then he said, um, "So this was written Monday." He wrote uh, last night after the league's double or nothing pay per view event, and then in parentheses he wrote, "Yes, I watch pro wrestling press conferences now." Khan said. I am happy working for Mr. David Zaslov, and I'm hoping we can do it for a long time. So Tony Khan is politically, you know, playing it for David Zaslov. He's not creating any animosity. He's only been positive about Zaslov. So that is, you know, that that is probably the right way to to do this thing. Uh, but that is it. So, yeah, man, I thought that was interesting. I'm happy that Bellany actually covered it because, like, he's a Hollywood guy. Like, he's a... You know, the fact that he wrote the three letters AEW in his newsletter, I thought were uh, very important because it shows that, you know, even people at his level are seeing AEW as sports programming or sports adjacent programming or whatever uh, that actually matters in the big picture. So I thought that was actually very positive for him to be yeah. writing about them. In his no, it totally matters. It totally matters because, you know, wrestling really set off cable television. They've been there since the inception of cable. They've always been successful on cable, and it's a it's a meter, it's a gauge for mm -hmm. everything else that happens. Whatever's happening in professional wrestling, as far as viewership goes, 
you know, unless something, you know, travesty happens and creative goes out the window and now it sucks. It is a great representation of cable viewership. You know, the 18 to 20, 18 to 34s are dwindling. The 18 to 49s are kind of still there, but the over 50 is who's watching. It is a great representation of, of the viewership of cable television. Uh, but the other side is, you know what else you're competing with now? TikTok. You're not <laughs> just competing. You're competing with YouTube. You know what I watched all day today instead of having Fox News on or MSNBC or CNN, which normally I have the news on when I'm doing or working, right? Or, or mostly it's CNBC, to be honest. I was watching... A, a compilation of some guy's Soprano episode reviews of the entire <laughs> seasons. And I had it on and he has like an hour and a half blocks. And that's what I had on my TV. There you go. You know what? You know who's getting screwed there? Anything that's on television and anything yep. that's ad driven with, with cable viewership. That's just the market. It's changing. It's changing totally. I, I think this will... For AEW to stay on WBD, it's a benefit for WBD. Same for AEW. They need a network partner like that. I, it's too soon to go digital. I, I don't see that happening. If anybody is suggesting that, that is terrible advice.